So let's take a couple minutes to just break down and make some bold predictions about the Zurich Diamond League final, highlight a couple events that are going to be happening. It's going down on September 7th, so Wednesday, as well as September 8th on Thursday, the 7th. Couple introductory events. We got the shot put, we got the pole vault, the 5,000 high jump. Um, but the September 8th events on Thursday is really where everything is going to be happening. So we're going to take a look at a couple events that I'm going to be having an eye on. First off, that women's 200 meters. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Sharika Jackson gets very close to the women's world record. She's already run 21.45 seconds this year. We know the world record is 21.3 seconds. Of course, Florence Griffith Joyner all the way back at the Seoul 1988 Olympics. I think Sharika Jackson is going to get very close to that performance. Now, remember, Sharika Jackson in the 100 meters, she's been getting faster and faster all year. Finished second place at the World Championships behind Shelly and Fraser Price just not too long ago at the Brussels Diamond League. She actually won the Diamond League 100 meters and got the win in 10.73 seconds. So for her to be consistently improving in the 100 meters, of course, her personal best is 10.71 when she got that silver medal. That consistency in the 100, I think, is going to translate into her final 200 meter race of the year she's gonna have some competition of course gabby thomas gabby thomas coming off injury but she might be able to um you know factor in here tamara clark she's run 21.92 this year as well a couple other women but sharika jackson separated from the field look out for mujinga kumbunji she just won european championships in the 200 she has a personal best of 22.05 seconds from this year so she might be able to surprise you know run something fast might be seeing her in the sub 22s Next up, that men's 200 meters. Now, here, it is all about Noah Lyles. Of course, at the early stages of the year, we were looking at Noah Lyles versus Arian Knighton, but Noah Lyles has really separated himself from Arian Knighton. This is really Arian Knighton's first professional year, full professional year in a sense. Of course, last year, he signed um, with Adidas very early in the season. Um, but this is really about Noah Lyles. I'm not 100% sure. I think he might be able to improve on his personal best, but I don't think he's going to hit it. I would love to see him get, you know, maybe into the 19 twos, right? Maybe surpass what um, Johan Blake ran at 19.26 back in 2011. But we're going to see Noah Lyles run something definitely sub 19.5 seconds. I think it's going to go down here. Of course, definitely keeping a lookout for Area Knighton. I think that performance that he had in Brussels, the just above 20 seconds, that was a really strong performance. He was running into a negative 2.5 meter per second headwind. So that was a huge performance. We are definitely going to see him maybe in the 1960s, 1970s again. We'll see what he's able to do. I'm also looking out for Kenny B. Now, Kenny B, he unfortunately pulled up early in the season after the World Championships at one of the Diamond League races. Couldn't complete there. Had a little cramp. We're going to see him. He's back in the field here. We're going to see what he's going to be able to do. Also, Dream Richards. I think he's one to always look out for. Commonwealth Games champion, 19.80 this year. And then we're going to see, you know, what a couple other other guys are going to be able to do. Moving over to the women's 100 meters. Now, this is, of course, highly anticipated because of all the names here. And this is one of the few events that has nine women and nine athletes competing in the event. Everyone from Shelly Ann Fraser Price, the world champion, 10.6 a trillion times this season already. Um, of course, we have Aaliyah Hodge. She's been super consistent, and I think she's, you know, one of the strongest, if not the top American in terms of consistency year after year when we're talking about the 100 meters. Sharika Jackson, she's going to be running here before the 200 meters. I think that Sharika Jackson might be able to pull off the win here. Shelly Ann Fraser Price, again, she's coming off the injury, right? She, Shelly Ann just lost to Sharika Jackson at the Brussels Diamond League. I think Sharika Jackson, she's really hitting on all cylinders. She might be able to pull off the win here. Do not sleep on that 10.73 seconds she ran in Brussels. She has never run this fast, this consistently all season. And this is only her second season in the short sprint. So keep a lookout for Sharika Jackson. Kumbunji's in there, Morrison. Daryl Nita is also another one to take a look at. She just won the Berlin meet a couple days ago in 11 flat. And she has been super consistent in the sub 11 performances. Not saying she's going to get the win or anything like that. But if she runs like 10-8, that would not surprise me at all. Now, of course, Shakari Richardson, she's always been a lightning rod for controversy, but I think she's been having a very consistent season. She's been running sub 11s multiple times throughout the season. Of course, she's run 10-7 uh, multiple times last year before the ban, but despite, you know, all the setbacks and despite the, you know, one meet that she had a bad competition at, which just happened to be USA's, the most important meet of her season, she's been having a pretty good season. So keep a lookout for what she's able to do. Of course, 20 Shateri is in there, 10.82 se uh, seasons best this year and personal best this year. She's always going to be in the mix. 
and Marie Jose Talou. Never sleep on Marie Jose Talou. She not only broke the African record this year, 10.72 seconds, in Brussels, she actually ran her previous African record, 10.78 seconds. So she is definitely going to be in the mix and always one to look out for. Moving over a little bit, men's 400 meter hurdles. Of course, we don't have Warholm, we don't have Rai Benjamin, but Dos Santos, he's always gonna be in the mix here. I don't know if he, we'll see if he's able to run in the 46s. I doubt he's gonna get far, you know, down to his personal best of 46.29, but we'll see what he's able to do. He's a clear favorite. I also always wanna keep a lookout for Khalifa Rosser. He's been super consistent, improving his personal best throughout the year, already down to 47.59. We're gonna see what he's able to do here. I think he's gonna maybe improve his personal best. He might be in the mix there. Also, moving down to the women's 400 meters. Now, we don't have Shawnee Miller Weibo. Miller Weibo already ended her season after uh, winning the 400 at NACAX, but Shade Williams from Barbados. She has been one of the top athletes this year and really had a huge, huge season considering what she's been coming off of the past couple years. This year, she stepped things up significantly, has run 49 seconds multiple times, and now has a personal best of 49.75. She might be able to, uh, you know, really perform strong here, but Paulino, Tokyo Olympic silver medalist, world championship silver medalist from this year as well. She is, of course, going to be the one to look out for and probably the favorite in this race, considering what she's run. And then, of course, we have to know Cofield. Just in Brussels, she actually beat out Sade Williams to run a personal best of 49.80 seconds. So always looking out for them and then the Jamaicans. I really am big on Candice McLeod. She has been, you know, this year hasn't been as great for her. She does have a season's best of 49.87, but a little bit up and down. I think she is one of the strongest contenders in the future of the 400 meters. Let's dive over and talk about the women's 100 meter hurdles. Now, the two things I'm kind of looking out for here, Tobia Musan, of course, world record holder, 12.12 seconds at the world championships in those semifinals, ran 12.06 seconds, wind aided in the finals to get that gold medal. She's been very consistent in the 12 fours and then you know a couple other times as well, just came off in Berlin running 12.45 seconds. I really wanna see what she's able to do here against this super stacked field. She did just lose a couple weeks ago to Jasmine Camacho Quinn. And Camacho Quinn has been having one of the greatest seasons in the entire event, despite what Tobia Musan has done. Now, let's be clear. Tobia Musan, world record holder, you know, in the event, she's the greatest and the fastest to ever run the event. But Jasmine Camacho Quinn's consistency is really unmatched to a degree. Go and look back at Jasmine Camacho's Quinn's season compared to Tobia Musan's season. Toby has a lot of losses prior to the World Championships. Jasmine has been super consistent. And just in Brussels, Camacho Quinn ran 12.27 seconds. That is one hundredth of a second away from her personal best that she ran in the semifinals of the Tokyo Olympic Games to set that Olympic record. So look out for what Camacho Quinn is able to do here. And of course, look out for Amusan and all the other ladies on the list as well. Let's dive into the women's 400 meter hurdles. Now, there's just two things I really want to note here. Of course, we really have to look out for Rochelle Clayton. You know, Rochelle Clayton has been having a really consistent season, consistently progressing year after year. Also, Janine Russell from Jamaica, 53.52 seconds this year. Not too far off her personal best, but she's been also very consistent. I want to make a huge note about Gianna Woodruff. Gianna Woodruff this year has been progressing consistently. You know, she hasn't been a medal contender in a sense. You know, she's always made the finals in Tokyo and then of course in uh, Oregon this year. But let's look out for what she's able to do. She's getting closer and closer to that 53 second barrier. We'll see if she's maybe even able to improve her personal best from 53.69 to, you know, sub 53.5. We'll see what she's able to do. Delilah Muhammad though. Now, we saw her at the Diamond League a couple weeks ago in, um, I think it was Lausanne, where she didn't run very well. She kind of finished last. Like she looked like she was just jogging just to run. But since then, she's run a couple races and she's been very, very consistent. Running 53 seconds a couple times and 54 a couple times as well. Look out for what she's able to do here. Now, I'm not saying she's going to beat Femke Bol. Femke Bol has been clicking off wins, you know, running 52 seconds multiple times, but Mohammed might be able to pull something out. You never know what could happen. What I'm looking at here though is Femke Bol, not how fast she's going to run, but if she gets the win, go look at those world rankings. Because of how, you know, kind of weird and strange the world rankings are for World Athletics, Femke Bol could win the Diamond League here. And just because she's been running the Diamond League and Sidney McLaughlin has not been running the Diamond League, Femke Bol could have more Diamond League points and technically, quote unquote, be ranked higher than Sidney McLaughlin, which makes no sense. 
but always looking out for Femke Kimball. Let's see what she's able to compete um, and do here. Now, women's triple jump. Triple jump is one of my favorite events, both on the men's and women's side. I'm looking out for Yulamar Rojas. People have been sleeping on Yulamar Rojas in terms of her being a potential athlete of the year candidate. Now, outdoors, she's jumped the season's best of 15.47 meters. She also has a personal best, which is the outdoor world record from last year of 15.67 meters. But indoors this year she jumped 15.74 meters that is the world record and is on the verge of the 16 meter barrier if you've noticed in some of her previous competitions she's been fouling a lot i think she's trying to go for something super big she knows she's going to win she knows she's, she's gonna jump 15 meters but i think she's going for something very very big yulamar rojas definitely one to look out for also shanika ricketts personal best of 14.98 from a couple years ago this year, she jumped 14.94. I think she jumped 14.92. She has been very consistent and she is going for that 15 meter barrier. I really wanna see if she's able to get over that barrier and jump 15 meters and you know really contend for a good, good mark in uh, Zurich here. Also, I have to note Marina Beck Romanchuk, of course, the European champion. She eventually got over that 15 meter barrier in at the European Championships, 15.02 meters. Now, she's not gonna win the competition here unless, unless Yulmar Rojas, you know, kind of slips up, but she is a very strong contender for you know potentially jumping 15 meters again and pushing some of the other ladies. This whole field is stacked. Tori Franklin, world championship bronze medalist, 14.86 meter personal best that she set after the world championships. So she is always in the mix and looking to improve. Thea Lafond from Dominica, 14.56 seasons best, but she does have a personal best of 14.60. If you look at one of her jumps from the world championships, she had a 15 meter foul. She is right in the range of getting to, you know, high 14s into the 15 meters, and she has a lot to go. So we'll see what she does here. And of course, Patricia Mamona, Olympic silver medalist from last year. She's jumped 15.01 meters. You know, this year has been a little bit up and down, not as consistent, but this women's triple jump is super stacked. One of my favorite events. And of course, the men's triple jump. Two athletes to just note, Hughes for Brees Zango. Now, Zango, one again, one of my favorite athletes, you know, coming from Burkina Faso. He has the world indoor record. Um, and of course, outdoors, he hasn't jumped 18 meters, but he's looking to really improve. He's been a little up and down because of the injuries that he had um, after the indoor season. And he didn't compete from February all the way until June but got the silver medal at the world championships. Let's see what he's able to do here. Season's best of 17.55. Pedro Pablo Pichardo. Now, Pichardo is really the, you know, one of the best athletes over the past decade, right? 2013, you remember he got the, um, I think it was a silver medal at the world championships um, just behind Teddy Tambo at those Moscow world championships. Since then, he's been clicking things off. 2015, he had those crazy back and forths, jumping 18 meters along with Christian, Christian Taylor. But of course, 2020 got the Olympic gold medal. Um, this year, got the world championship gold medal. Let's see if he's able to get over the 18 meter barrier and potentially improve on his personal best of 18.08 meters. All right, so that's just what I'm looking for at the Zurich Diamond League. Again, it's going down on September 7th. So Wednesday is that first day. And then of course, September 8th, Thursday, that's gonna be where everything is going down. Men's, women's, all the events for the Diamond League final. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're looking forward to at the Zurich Diamond League Finals. Um, let me know, you know, some of your top performances, some of your top events. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.